to, so, to watch that time. So when you got into the business, normally I'm, I'm always asking, you know, did you have doubters? Did you have supporters? With your background, I'm assuming it was just all supporters on the family side because they were there. But it was, but I'm also nervous, Nelly, about um, everyone who knows me knows I, I um, it was a big adjustment for me not knowing how much I was going to make. Um, and that just the first couple of years, like I made $13,000 before taxes in my first year and you have all these expenses, you have everything going on. And that just stressed me out a lot. I kept wanting to go back to waiting tables to just know, cause I knew I could make money right. waiting tables. I was good at it. Right. Um, and so to keep me from doing that, that's how, uh, so first Monarch Mortgage started in 1997 and I got there at 2002 and, um, they started me processing to supplement okay. uh, my time and my income. And I got to learn. So I had a salary processing and then I got to sell houses. And because it was in house, if I had to show house at 10 or go to closing at two, as long as I got my work done processing, um, it wasn't a big deal. And back then um, people had to bring me in papers and, you know, we had to make copy packs and, yeah. and, you know, mail them off to the underwriter and it was very different. So it was, you know, it's, there were some times when I would get in at um, five in the morning just to make all the copy packs to get them mail overnighted that day because I hadn't gotten it done yet. Yeah. Um, so uh, that was nice. And I did that for 10 years. Wow. And Absolutely. the knowledge that I gained uh, and still get, even though I'm not intricately involved, I'm an owner and I sit next to everyone um, and I get to right. hear all the conversations and, uh, and only be involved if something extreme is happening. I like to say, if I have to make a phone call for First Monarch Mortgage, you're done messed up. <laughs> like, no, my goal no. is to not have to be involved in First Monarch. So, yeah. Now, with that, you said you did that for 10 years. Yeah. Um, was it was it because maybe the real estate side didn't take off like expected? Or was it you just found out well, that you just liked it? Or, you know, so you have to remember, like, this was a plan B for me. Yeah. And I had also just started drinking. <laughs> For the first time. So my mom was like, you have one year. Get it out of your system. Yeah. And come to work. So I did. I look back at that year and I'm like, how did I not die? Like, <laughs> so, so there was a lot more going on than just yeah. that. But also I like to be busy. I can't sit still. And yeah. to this day, I still have three or four jobs. I, I can't, you know, that's why I processed for so long. Even though I got busy, I, I like I like Just being, things, I'm not yeah. overworked, but I like being busy. Yeah. I like, I like doing things. Yeah. Yeah. I like multitasking. I like being busy. I like, I like all that. It's, it's one of the things that I struggle with is I, I enjoy working. I enjoy mm -hmm. real estate sitting, sitting at home or, you know, just chilling brings me more anxiety. I'm getting better at it now, but you I feel know, like we could be best friends. It, I mean, it wasn't like, it's not like I'm like, you know, it's like scratching myself because, but it's like, I just enjoy, you know, hard work. I, mm -hmm. I enjoy real estate. I enjoy the lifestyle that it can provide, you know, me can provide any of the agents that work in the business or any real estate professional. Mm -hmm. um, so I totally get where you're coming from. Yeah. It's, and, and again, so like I said, I, I, you know, 20 years later, I still, uh, you know, I mean, not last year, I feel like I had somewhere 90, 95 transactions as a solo agent, you know, no, no licensed assistant, no nothing. So I'm very busy, but I also do all the payroll, all the QuickBooks, all that for all three companies. So the property management, Remax and First Monarch, I'm in charge of all the advertising, all the marketing, all those decisions. Um, and sometimes I'm tired, but for the most part, it's, it's only, and that's the thing I have to think about, well, it's really only spring or early fall. The rest of the time, I'm like, I'm glad I do this extra stuff because it keeps me busy, you know? Yeah winter every year I get in trouble because I don't have as much to do. And I'm, <laughs> I just find that shit falls through the cracks because yeah. I, I am not go, go, go. So I'm like, ah, yeah, I forgot to do that. How do you, how do you manage that all? I think one of the hardest things for a lot of people getting into our industry is they're coming from a career, not always, but from a place where they're tired of being told what to do, when to do it and how to do it. And what I Real estate's the wrong thing for you to be in then well, because that's all you say. And that's what I tell them. I said, you know, to be honest. It's the same thing. Yeah. To be honest, I'm like, you know, look, the most successful agents, the most successful teams, whatever, 
they tell themselves every day what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. But so do their you know? clients. Yeah. And so, so do the lenders. I, so do the, like, you like to say you control things, but you really don't. So, and that's why I think the, the, the people that come into this industry that were really successful at bartending or serving, I mean, how do you get through an insane rush? How do, and, and someone called off and you're the only person behind the bar working three sections yeah. by yourself. I mean, how do you, you just do it? You just do it. And I think that's part of me that just enjoys that, you know, really busy, the chaos of it kind of the chaos of it because it's it's not that it's adrenaline is that it's it's not fun. yeah i think it is that right it's that it's that adrenaline dopamine rush mm -hmm. but then it's finding that balance too like i would really love to find someone else to do all the payroll and the quickbooks and stuff but there's only five of us i can't justify the expense i can't it would be stupid so i'll just do it it's fine it's not a big deal um but but how do you but how do you really manage i mean you know 95 you said 95 closings as a yes, solo. i think i don't yeah well, okay there. roughly regardless yeah. it's, a, yeah. it's a shit ton <laughs> you know for one agent mm -hmm. um as well as run you know other businesses as well as you know do everything out have a life right like you know like for me yeah. i was talking i was talking to agents like you know a lot of people need to be honest with themselves and who they are and what they're looking to accomplish Right. Like for me, 90, 95 deals is like, holy smokes, you know, as a soul, like I would never want that. Right. But like, how do you man, like, how do you manage that? A lot of people struggle with the activity uh, side of things. I mean, sometimes I don't, sometimes yeah. I don't, but I think that's acknowledging it. Just like, you know, I haven't reconciled our bank accounts since January. I'll get to it. Yeah. I'll get to it. You know, there's certain things that do fall the crack, fall through the cracks during the busy season, but it's never something that's vitally important. Um, and uh, I set boundaries with my clients. You know, when we do our consults to give myself some space, I let them know that I'm early to bed, early to rise. So if they're trying to get with me after 930, but they might get an email from me at 530. Yeah. So, um, you know, waking up early, getting a lot of stuff done before before the day starts. You can You can knock a lot of stuff out in an hour if no one's bothering you. Yeah. It's about f efficiency and managing your time. And and honestly, I, just stuff gets, it's, nothing's that big of a deal. Like I have a deal falling apart right now. And if and you can't just freak out. Like everything's usually really calm because I'm calm. And my mom always used to say to me, if you're the professional and you're freaking out, what do you expect your clients to do? Mm. So you just have to stay calm. You just work through it. And usually everything gets done pretty quickly you know, but I've also managed those expectations of my clients way early in the process. And there's not a lot of debate or, or anything like that because I've earned that trust. For sure.